Today's episode of The Trudy Show is brought to you by Encore Studios. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the very first episode of The Trudy Show. So I am Trudy and I am here with our, our very first guest, Hoodie Hardaway. So, hello, Hoodie Hardaway. What's um, up? How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for being our first guest. We Thank really you for having me. We appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, so today we just want to start off with, you know, some basic questions just to get to know you. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of fans out there who have a lot of things that they would like to, to find out. Um, so the first question I have here for you is that you have mentioned that your name comes from a combination of fashion especially hoodies am i right yeah, yeah, yeah. and also basketball correct yeah, yeah, yeah. okay perfect so if you could just tell us you know uh what what your favorite clothing brand is what your favorite basketball team is um let us know a little bit about that mm, my favorite clothing brand like i like a lot of like underground stuff really mm -hmm. like I, I like instagram stuff like instagram like just pages on instagram people who make things like uh, there's a lot so of these custom, like, yeah, custom yeah, like mo mostly custom things. Um, I definitely like, uh, like I, when I was growing up, like I was real into like Supreme and stuff like that. Like the Tyler wave though of mm -hmm. Supreme, like when it was like, you know, Tyler like, the creator. Yeah. Uh, Supreme palace. Um, I like Vans. I used to be into Jordans a lot, but I kind of got off that too. Once I stopped playing basketball as much, mm -hmm. just like Vans, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay, and who's your favorite basketball team at the moment? Um, I've been a Chicago Bulls fan my whole life, pretty much. The Bulls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds good. Um, so, so all right. So now moving on to your music. So you've mentioned that you started making music in the eighth grade. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Just about there. Okay. So did you think that you would still be making music today when you were eight years old? Um, honestly... I I wanted to like even because there was a time like I started in eighth grade seventh grade ish around that time like maybe a summer going into eighth grade and like I had stopped for a while and I ended up playing basketball for a different school like I had left Scranton High mm -hmm. and I started doing cyber so I went and played basketball for a school in Old Forge so I was like really focused on sports and I was like really focused on basketball for a while but then after I got in some trouble went through some things uh Pretty much just like I don't even know how it happened. I just kind of like got back into the music okay. like randomly. Like literally I got a new I got a new phone and just started writing stuff. And mm -hmm. then just like I don't know one day I just made a song again and I was like, yo, this is way better than anything I've ever made. And I just kept going with it after that. But nah, honestly, I didn't think so. But I wanted to always. It was always in the back of my head. But there was like a good three year stretch where I wasn't doing anything music wise. All right. Well, that actually brings me to another question because I was very curious about how your transition into cyber school? That's another question that I wanted to ask. Do you believe that s from when you started cyber school, there was more of a focus on your music? Um, No, not at that time specifically, because when I had first started cyber school, I wasn't really, I wasn't really making music too mm -hmm. much at that time. Like I was just listening to it a lot. Like I was super into listening to it heavily, but I, n I never really was making music at that time too much anymore and then cyber was weird for me because like it was before the covid thing so like i it was like it was abnormal for me like now it's like a mm -hmm. normal thing like people are like oh yeah school at home yeah. like <laughs> that was like very weird and it was like it, it wasn't as much time as i thought i was gonna have like free time as as i thought i was gonna have i thought i was gonna have a lot more free time but it really wasn't it was pretty much just the same amount of work if you really okay. do it yeah all right well how how did you like personally take that transition? Because I, I know you know, like you said, now with COVID and everything that we went through, it's a lot more. Everything is online, you know, even shopping. But back then, you know, we never knew that that was going to be a thing. You as a person, how did you take the transition from public school to cyber school? Um, it was it was weird at first because like like I said, there was really like nobody like telling you to get it done, telling you to do it, and like. I'm not, like, not that I'm not motivated, but, like, school to me, like, I always got good grades. I always, like, paid attention and everything, like, 
grades weren't an issue. I just, I hated it, like, for some reason. Like, I hated it. It was such a drag. So I figured cyber would just be better. But then at the same time, it was like I was so focused on other things, like even sports, music, whatever, like listening to music, wh- doing whatever other than schoolwork. So it, it, it was hard at first because, like, I had nobody to, like, like no oh, you got to get this done. Yeah, there yeah. was no structure whatsoever. <laughs> and, like, I feel like I could live without a little bit of structure. But, like, at that age, you need it. Yeah. Like, badly. Definitely. That's w- I think that's like a lot of why I started doing the stuff I was doing because I just had no structure. Yeah. So it was just like basketball and then that was it. Like. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so that that's definitely interesting. I think at, at that age, you, like you said, you definitely need something to keep you accountable. Um, at that age, you're still not aware enough of how much free will you truly have, I think. So I could definitely see that that being an issue. Um, But anyway, so, yeah, going back to your music, I know you started off on SoundCloud, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So do you believe that now, nowadays, that SoundCloud rapper title, do you think that has a negative connotation or do you believe it kind of went mainstream? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think... I think it depends on the area you're at a lot. Like, I feel like there's some regions where it's still a huge thing. And there's a lot of, like, in the Midwest, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists on SoundCloud that are doing huge numbers. Um, A lot of people in Florida, SoundCloud is huge in Florida. Like, it depends on the region you're at. But definitely right now, streaming is, like, number one. Like, SoundCloud is great, and they're trying to do a lot of things to change it to make it more like Spotify, more like, like, there's a SoundCloud for artists now. There didn't used to be that. So there's like a whole nother app now where you could like look at insights and everything like that. But um, the thing about SoundCloud is it's like they let you drop when you want to drop. Mm-hmm. There's no restrictions to what you what you can and can't do. Like you could drop whenever I could drop a song right now. I could drop a song tomorrow. And there's no a lot of times with the streaming services like there's deadlines. There's like there's like due dates and stuff like that. Like you have to put it out by a certain time or or the deadline will be pushed back. Like all types of things like that. That gets annoying. But other than that. I definitely like Spotify and Apple Music and all that more because it's just, it's easier yeah. to reach people. You definitely more accessible. Yeah, you learn something new every day. I, I definitely did not know that there were, you know, due dates and stuff on on dropping your music. Um, that's, that's something new. Um, all right, well, uh, now let's, I know I've seen, I've seen a couple of your posts and I know you are a quite a bit into fashion, mm-hmm. correct? So I just l- I just want to hear just a little bit of your opinion on, you know, fashion these days. Uh, you know, what, what kind of fashion are you into? What have you been looking at, you know, or, or is anything in the works for fashion? Any any of that sort? Um, I really like, I like a lot of stuff from, like, Japan. Like, I, I love Tokyo. I like how they dress in Japan. I think it's amazing out there. Like, the how way that they just don't care. How do they dress in Japan? What? How, how like would you describe that? A lot like? of, like, just, like, it's, like, a lot of stuff that they make, like, a lot of stuff that's, like, thrifted, uh, like, you know. And then a lot of the brands, like, the influencers out there are, like, very just low-key. They do their own thing. They're not really worried about clout, really. Like, they mm. just get it by chance, kind of. Like, they're just, like, doing their own thing, and people gravitate towards it. And yeah, then that's the best. Happen. Yeah, like, it's really organic. And, like, people are just having fun out there. Like, a lot of people in the States, especially, I feel like, they'll, like, wear something and be like, oh, this person's going to judge me. Like, well, like I feel like out there they just dress so carefree. Like, they yeah. don't care at all. Like, they'll wear whatever just they feel like that day. Yeah. And I think that's what people should do more. Well, I, I, also, I also kind of see a pattern in fashion as well where it's, like, who's wearing what and that kind of what makes, you know, an item more popular yeah, or yeah. et cetera, et cetera. When it's just like, I, yeah, definitely in other cultures, it's more so what do I like? Mm-hmm. Whereas here we kind of follow the big names. It's very superficial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely agree on that. Um, but uh, so you, you mentioned you were meeting with a director later this week. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that would be for a music video, correct? Yeah, yeah. All right. And is that your first music video? Uh, yeah, it's going to be my first one that I ever, like, had done. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, um, as much as you want, you know, who the director is? or. Um, I'm doing it with Half Woody. Um, he's local. He's around here. He's done, uh, he's done some videos for artists locally before. Um, I'm doing it with him, and it's, uh, it's for the song Project X. 
and I think we're gonna do another one for uh, bad kids too. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, what kind of what kind of I don't want to say vibe. Um, do you have a theme for those music videos, or are you kind of just going with with the flow? You're just going with whatever comes comes up. Um, is there something that you're trying to a, a sort of look that you're trying to you know pr- portray? <laughs> I really want to do one at a trampoline park. I feel like that would be pretty cool. Something that, yeah. different. Um, and uh, I I feel like for the Bad Kids one, like something, or the Project X one, I feel like I want to do something more like party-ish. Like I want to throw like a party for it or something. Mm-hmm. Just have a bunch of people pull up and then just get like a whole bunch of film of the party. Like not even something super set up, just a whole bunch of people just having a good time. Yeah. Having fun like that. Something you know? a little bit more chaotic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so you also mentioned that right after you switched to cyber school, um, and you know we know that you didn't get right into music right away, but you said that you just kind of took your phone and you just started writing. Mm. Um, did you also make that music on your phone? So did you do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I still make music at home now, but um, I I. It depends on who I'm with. Like I, uh, I have a friend, Trippy, Trippy Goldberg. I I go to his house and record. At shout his out place to Trippy, yeah, Trippy Goldberg. Out Goldberg. <laughs> uh, I go to his house and record sometimes. I go over uh, Casey Shevlin Agu. I go over his house sometimes and record. It just depends on what's going on. I like to record at night, so usually mm-hmm. it's at my house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that leads me to my uh, next question, actually, because I know there's a lot of um, negative connotations sometimes. Um, on you know the artists who do create stuff at home how do you how do you feel about that how does that make you feel when there's such a you know um do you feel like it's better creating your own sound at home or do you believe you know going to a studio is better or i feel like once i feel like it's best to work by yourself at home until you really find what you want to sound like because okay. then because the problem is a lot of people are in that developmental stage where and like I'm still even like I don't even know what I really want to sound like. Like I feel like I'm getting there every every time I make a song, I'm getting closer and closer to like, all right, this is me. But like during that developmental stage, there's a lot of engineers who will like not even like force you to sound away. But like if you don't even know what you want to sound like, how is somebody else in the room going to tell you what you want to sound like? Yeah. It's all in here. You just got to figure it out first mm-hmm. and then bring it to somebody like, yo, this is what I want. Yeah. And well, then they can help you. You know what I'm saying? So like, I feel like when you're first starting, you should, you should like figure it all out on your own first and it makes it easier for you. And it makes it easier for the engineer. Cause I can imagine it's not easy for an engineer to work with somebody who has no idea what they want to do either. Yeah. I mean, I, c- I could definitely see that you definitely want to, you know, know what you want to sound like before you start going into someone else you don't want your sound to kind of you know be tainted i i don't use that word in a negative connotation but um you know if you have a sound that isn't fully developed yet and the producer that you go to already has his sound then you know it's kind of more of what you were not necessarily forced to do but you had to work with what you got, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely, I definitely understand that perspective, and I hope, I hope you do, you know, find the sound that you love and and can grow on because that that's I'm sure that's what all artists want. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and so, do you plan on working with producers anytime soon, or do you like, or like you said, you kind of just want to figure out what you're doing first? Um, yeah. I I d I tap in with a lot of producers over like Instagram and stuff through networking and all that. I get a lot of beat packs online. Mm-hmm. People will send me beats and stuff like that. Um but I, I also still use YouTube, of course, you know. You can't go wrong. Yeah. That, that'll always be a thing. But um like it's the the problem now though, I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm tired of hearing the same guitar loops over and over again, the same pianos over and over again. Like it's always the same loops, always the same keys, all over and over again. Like so, like I'll go through beat after beat after beat and nothing. Like there'll be nights where I sit there for four hours and listen to beats and get not one word recorded. That's a lot of I time. I can't <laughs> find a beat at all. Like beat selection is very important. Mm. That's like ninety percent of the song. Well, yeah. I mean, personally, um, I know we were talking before this, and you know, I had mentioned that. Um, just in general with songs i definitely tend to listen more to the beat than the lyrics so i could see how that's a huge huge factor that you want to have perfected before you even start you know rapping on it or any or any of that um but 
yeah, I also um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've been seeing on your social media. I know you've been um, I know you you've been added to a few playlists mm -hmm. uh, here and there. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Cause I I um, personally don't know how that how that whole thing works. <laughs> yeah, there's um there's a there's a couple Instagram pages that I'm tapped in with that uh they're like underground pages. They they're like more tapped in with the underground scene. Like I don't know who's familiar with like people, but like SSG Kobe, Sofago, Jace, like a whole bunch of people like that. Yeet. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit more mainstream now, but at a time when he was underground, like they're real tapped in with those that side of things. So. Like he made a post uh, about me, like a, a promo post on his page and everything like that. And uh, then he added me to his playlist and it's got a whole bunch of likes and everything like that. So playlisting is super important because people just throw it on that playlist and mm -hmm. drive and then you end up just getting well, played how, through. Yeah, yeah that's how you like, find the music. This? Yeah. <laughs> so I got I got put on that one. There was a one for Wake Up Filthy. I got put on that one. And then I just recently got put on one uh for next wave on spotify and it was like there's just a whole bunch of big artists on it and it's just like surreal to see my name next to people like that it's really crazy yeah i mean i saw you know how many um i saw the playlist i saw because on spotify it shows you kind of um how many likes it has yeah. and how many you know plays it has so i was definitely taking a look at that and i saw the numbers and you know i was like okay yeah like this is this is something really good um because you're right that's that's how you discover new music i always just throw a random playlist on shuffle so yeah um i'm that's that's a great opportunity for sure for i appreciate sure. that um okay so now a little bit about hoodie hardaway he is really into movies so i have a small little trivia here for him um it's only a couple questions and it's about his favorite director which happens to be tim burton so let's get into that um Okay, so my first question that I have here for you is, what year was Tim Burton born in? God damn, I don't know that one. I'm not. I can lie. give you. I can give you a couple of options. Don't right, worry, yeah, yeah, you can yeah, pick yeah. from one. So we have 1960, mm -hmm. 1988, mm -hmm. or 1958. I'm gonna say 1958. And he got that one correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. All right, so moving on to the second question. What superhero movie did Tim Burton direct? So for those you have, um, I can give you some options as well. I got you, okay. I got you, I got you. It's <laughs> the Batman. Yeah, 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 that is that. Didn't even need to yeah. give him options. Um, all right, and here is the third question. Um, what was his budget for his first movie, Beetlejuice? I remember watching this too in a YouTube video. I, I can't remember the number though. I can give you some options. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So we have sixty million, a mm -hmm. hundred million, or fifteen million. Fifteen million? That is correct. So Hoodie Hardaway here got all three questions of the Tim Burton trivia correct. So he must really be your favorite director. <laughs> so that is all we have today for Hoodie Hardaway. Um, we definitely want to see him here again when whenever there's, you know, something new coming on or just come back and just talk to us. Um, we definitely want that. Um, and I want to personally thank you for, again, being the first guest on the podcast. Um, like I said, we hope to see you back. It was very nice talking to you. And if you have any last comments, concerns or anything statement to say to the the audience. Uh, I want to thank uh I want to thank y'all for having me. I want to thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. It means a lot. I want to thank everybody who's been showing love, supporting recently. Uh, it means a lot because I really make this stuff from my heart, and it means a lot. So when people relate, it's like, you know, I mean, it means I'm doing something right. Like, I just want to help people. Uh, I just want to make sure that people know that they can do whatever they want to do, and there's no one that can tell you different. Like, don't listen to nobody. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do anything. I promise you, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. And... Uh, Shout out, yeah, shout out to everybody that be supporting and um, stream Hoodie Hardaway, Spotify, Apple Music, all that title, wherever you can find music, you can find me. I appreciate y'all. Make sure to tap into those playlists that he's also featured on. Um, I'm sure we can point them to the right direction for that. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And we hope to see you back here next week. Thank you.